Hello, 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 and welcome to the Drag Race Recap here on Reality TV Rehap Ups. I'm your host, Liana Boris, and today we are talking about episode six from RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star Season 8. I am back. I am here. I will give my thoughts on everything, as well as a little bit of the Heidi quit, but honestly... I considered never coming back because of how good these two did while I was away. It was such a pleasure to listen to, and I'm really happy to get the opportunity to talk to them today. So first, a man who I got to draft Big Brother seasons with this yes. week, which was super fun, Amon Adwin. Amon, how are you? I am well. Um, yeah, just happy to be back. Um Back in the podcasting swing, it seems. Big Brother is on the horizon, kicking it with you two for Drag Race. So, yeah, just it's a good, it's a lovely Saturday uh, afternoon or uh, late morning, rather. Whenever this is, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> and you just heard her beautiful laugh. It is Beth Dixon. Beth, how are you? I'm doing really well. It's so good to have you back here. And I have to say, you two were the two people who I looked at your drafts and I went, I'm having a really hard time between Liana and Amon, who has the better draft team. Yes. Um, I think I've settled with Amon purely because of my bias for BB-17. And that's about Fair. it. But, <laughs> but have I to say. I thought BB-17 was... might get some people. I'm glad. You get the Beth uh -huh. vote. Yeah, you had to get the Beth <laughs> vote. I mean, sucker. The Steve Moses vote. <laughs> I was like, Steve Moses vote. I have to go for it. But, mm. uh, but no, I'm just so happy to be back in the saddle with both of you this week talking about some drag race. Yes. Okay. So we have a, a lot to talk about. So briefly out of the gate, I do think that the two of you, as I mentioned, did so good covering, I mean, really what the main story was, which was the Heidi quit, which I know taking a little bit of a step back, we've kind of moved on, but I just wanted to briefly say like, look, Whatever decision she is okay with, she seems happy with the decision still. I think it's unfortunate to see her go, especially because a lot of us, including the queens that were there, consider her to be a big threat. But yeah. we yeah. wish her nothing but the best. It seems that the show wishes her nothing but the best, which is also a good thing to see because you never know when there's sort of a um, someone leaving the competition like that, if it's like a good relationship that they're leaving yeah. on. So unfortunate to see Heidi go, but we move on. Jimbo gets we her move. third. We move. We move. <laughs> Jimbo got her third win as cracked out Shirley Temple and then maybe fumbles the bag a little bit here. But don't worry, production armor is there to keep her safe. <laughs> so mm -hmm. let's talk about this rusical, which I am always excited for a good rusical. Mon, how did you think this episode stacked up? Yeah, I, this this definitely is going to enter the conversation of one of the best rusicals. Uh, for Drag Race, um, I have recently become a bit of a, a Joan. Um, oh my God, what's her name? <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> I'm such a big fan of Joan. Big fan of Joan. I was about to say Rivers. Rivers? I was like, it's not Rivers. <laughs> <laughs> it all started when uh, Ryan Mur Murphy like uh, did that season of feud with uh, between yeah uh, Betty Davis and, and Joan Crawford. And it kind of made me like look into her career and like, you know, research her a little bit and watch a couple of her movies. So mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, getting there with her. And I thought that this was a lovely like um, reminder to to go back and look at um, this lady's illustrious career. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this this Rusical was uh, was really, really good. Um, I, I feel like it was cast very well. I think that they did a good job picking their own roles um, and it was it was hard. Like I think that Michelle was right when she was like, "We're separating the A pluses from the A's because no one really did bad." And uh, I kind of wish that no one went home on this episode as opposed to the last one. You know, so mm -hmm. it's just yeah. This was kind of I was disappointed with how things end up, but we'll we'll get to it. Mm -hmm. Beth, what about you? Does it stack up the A's? Oh, versus I definitely the A pluses. Agree. Yeah, the A's versus the A pluses for sure. And then you have like a. 0.5s i guess of the safe mm -hmm. queens um but i have a lot of thoughts on the judging of this episode <laughs> once again uh, um what a surprise i have question marks um <laughs> i have to say i do think this was one of the stronger stronger ones i loved the choreography that adam was able to put together for them i thought that all of it looked really impressive um and i i just flat out just don't agree with some of the comments that were made period with some mm. of the judging um so regardless like i really feel like we could all have a variety of opinions of who should have been in the top or in the bottom and i think we'd all be right <laughs> so 
So it's going to be really interesting to break all of this down with the two of you. Definitely. I think that the, you know, the fact that we're going back to the unauthorized Rusical, I think is appropriate timing because it has been a little while since we've done this. We've done Madonna. We've done Cher. Is there anybody else that I'm missing? The Kardashians. The Kardashians. Oh, the Kardashian, the Rusical. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Which sort of sort of counts. Uh, (laughs) But I I think it was nice to pick Joan Crawford as the target Mm -hmm. of the Rusical because, you know, we often talk about like, oh, Drag Race is a platform for education and especially for history. And I think to do this during Pride Month, I think is really fun. I think Mm -hmm. to, you know, take a step back and do a little bit more in depth because we do have Joan Crawford, what happened to baby Jane, like references that we've seen throughout the seasons. So this Mm -hmm. I thought was was really fun. And I think... um, I think in terms of a choice, it was nice to have a little bit of a deviation from sort of the traditional pop divas that we've done yeah. in the past. So I'm really happy with this choice. And I also agree. I think the Queens killed this. I do feel like we're saying that every year, though. I feel by the time we get to this stage, everybody is such an ace and yeah. such a strong performer yeah. that, I mean, they just nail it. And it's I feel so like the writing has gotten a lot better as well. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, they like, fired whoever was being not the best. Yeah. <laughs> like right the music. killing it. Leland's he made me dress job. like he's right out of Scooby-Doo, but he's like <laughs> nailing it. And it's so fun. And I think also having um having him and Adam Shankman as yeah. the choreographer, those two just knew how to work with the Queens didn't need to be unnecessarily mean. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. I think that that really also helped to bring out the best performance possible. And especially Adam getting to go into untucked afterwards. Like you could tell he one really wanted to be there, appreciated being there and also knew what the Queens were getting into. Cause he recognized, look, I know you have to learn this in, he said 14 minutes or something like that. Like you learn the choreo Mm -hmm. in 14 minutes. Like what? Oh my gosh. And for them to be able to put out that. A little bit of shade at, one Todrick Hall when he made that <laughs> comment about not having to be mean to teach people. That's I, hope so. I hope mm. so. I hope so. <laughs> Eat it. Uh, yeah, Eat you don't it, have Todrick. to be mean. You do have to pay your rent. <laughs> you know <laughs> what? <laughs> those types of things. A foreign concept. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Look, so what did the Queens have to do this week? We've been talking about it, but officially they are channeling Hollywood royalty by singing and dancing in Joan, the unauthorized musical celebrating mommy dearest herself, Joan Crawford. So the Queens have to play Joan essentially at different stages. We've seen this before with other unauthorized musicals. They have to record their own vocals and then do the performance. Um, So I think that that's one deviation that we've seen Mm -hmm. where, or though, no, that share, I think they record their own. I don't remember if they Madonna, they, they did, did. Yeah. I think they did. I'm pretty yeah, sure okay. they did, yeah. Yeah, I want to rule the world. Yes, Jan. <laughs> Overlooked. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll get into the, the, the OG Jan of it all. Okay, yes. So that's what the queens have to do. They record their verses, and then they perform. Mm-hmm. And let's yeah. also not forget that they're airing this episode the weekend of the Tony Awards as well. Mm. And I, I, there was a part of me that wondered, were they planning this out and saying, okay, we're likely going to be airing this from these dates, which weekend would <laughs> fall with the Tony Awards? Boom. Yes. Timing. <laughs> Timing. They got it, they got it right. Uh, well, look, let's just jump on in. What's the headline for you, Amon, when we talk about this challenge? Um, oh, interesting. Um, I, I feel like, I think the headline is mostly that Candy has won her first challenge. Mm. Um, I don't, know if she should have (laughs) i think that she did a great job but i'm like looking back and thinking about like all of the individual performances and i'm like i don't know if the wire hanger is doing the work for her or if she's doing the work so i'm like Mm. um yeah i'm 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 happy that she won because there's like some level of intrigue now and she i think a lot of people predicted her to be a front runner because it's, it's candy muse um but up until this point she really hadn't um, she, did, she wasn't on the board, but now she's on the board. And I think people were sort of interested to see if she was going to put her money where her mouth was in terms of like what Heidi said last week. And I think that this week sort of proves that she is. So, yeah, I think, um, I, I, yeah, that's sort of like the takeaway for me is candy. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I, um, I, I mean, look, I looking at the performers, knowing Candy Muse did struggle in her previous rusical, she wasn't necessarily the performer that I thought was going to come in and knock this out of the park. I had assumed Alexis Michelle was going to win this purely based on theater kid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, who was prepared with her Ladoufas? <laughs> not she had the Patter movie. song too, and that's and the Patter so song so hard. <laughs> yes, exactly. So when anybody else, oh, and, and I was worried for Jimbo. Those are like my two thoughts going into the episode. It was like Alexis Michelle's gonna crush this, and I'm nervous for Jimbo. So the fact that both of them were safe was just like, well, I, then I have no idea what's gonna happen. I assumed Kahana was gonna be in the bottom, but in terms of the winner, then I was like, I guess Jessica Wild. Like it, Candy didn't even. Yes, she did great, but like in my brain at the moment when I was watching the episode, didn't immediately slot her in as the winner, which I thought was very interesting. Mm-hmm. My Definitely. headline reads very similar to that. My headline mm-hmm. is very much, you know, Queen robbed in the middle of the night, which is Alexis Michelle. And then also at the same time, um, who won? Question <laughs> mark. Um, because I I thought Candy would be in the bottom too. Uh, with her performance and was very shocked (laughs) that she wasn't because they were like oh yeah you're doing you just like nailed the choreography i was like do you realize her face was like this the entire time that she was doing something like they also talked about her vocals as if the vocals weren't engineered (laughs) (laughs) i was like thank you because she had that like why your hangers or something like that and it was yeah. yeah, like why? <laughs> it very much was like, okay, Lynn, we're gonna auto tune the car rap out of this, but make it sound like she's doing a run. Oh, yeah. it's so funny. <laughs> I just and she also didn't know her words in the beginning. She was just kind of like mm. bah, 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 mush mouthing it, and so yeah. I just was like, no, 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 no. I, I felt like her and James were going to be the bottom two. I felt like James was upstaged by the blonde woman playing Christina. Mm. <laughs> I kept watching her instead of James. Yeah, uh, that I felt the same way too. And I so, wanted James to do so. And not not like once again, like we're prefacing this all like the, all of them did a really good job. Like yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not one sitting of the here and saying shows. like oh my gosh, this, yeah. these people were so glaringly awful. But when you're like tearing apart you know when you're splitting hairs yeah. and such like i literally when i watched it the first time and then the second time i definitely like felt the same exact way mm-hmm. um so i just i don't know i mm-hmm. don't agree with candy winning at the very mm-hmm. least mm-hmm. well let's take a beat by beat and go through each of the queens and maybe we can sort of tease out where we think that everybody should have fallen at least based yeah. on our criteria so i think we need to kick things off with kahana because i didn't hear either of you mention her and for me she was somebody who like I did understand the judges critiques in terms of her face looking a little bit mm, like a little bit like she was thinking through the choreography. But I think for me, there's just something about the presence that I didn't necessarily feel. And I think it's tough to open the Mm. show and be the first performer. But that being said, I mean, well, they also did a lot of work on her vocals. So it's tough to like compare that part of it, knowing the only person I would really say maybe like, I mean, Jimbo and Alexis, maybe I would be like, oh, yeah, they definitely killed the vocals. Yeah. Maybe Jessica. I don't know. Anyway, look, the point is, is that I'm not going to use the vocals like either pro or against her just because I feel like they did so much auto tune on that that it puts it at a neutral for me. So then I have to look at the performance. And I think she did embody the flapper era well, I think maybe maybe it's the backup dancers that distracted me or something. There's some something about I, my sole focus wasn't on her. And I think that that's what I was looking for mm. with each of the queens. Is my sole focus on you? And I didn't really get that as much with Kahana. See, I actually, I disagree. I felt like she was... A, a star for her for her section I of agree. the song. I I I I thought that she was engaged. I didn't really quite understand the critique of like her face seeming as if she was going through it. I was like, this is her challenge because it's it's more performance mm-hmm. and like stage presence as opposed to like general acting. And the girl, she's a Vegas girl. She's a Vegas queen. She's also on um RuPaul's Drag Race Live. So I feel like. I, I, I thought that she was closer towards the top. I don't necessarily know mm-hmm. if she was if she wins, but I was kind of like, 
annoyed that she was in the bottom. I felt like she did a really good job. And it, her number also kind of reminded me of, um, I don't know if anyone, um, any of our listeners has ever watched Smash. I'm sure people have. I, I knew you were going to say Smash. 20th yes. Century Fox Trot. That's all I Absolutely. kept thinking about this entire time. I was like, oh my God. So maybe that's a little bit of my bias. I was like, yes, give it to me. Give it to me. But um. <laughs> I thought the same exact thing I'm on. And I'm not going to lie. Kahana was in my top two for this week when I watched oh my it the gosh. first time. And I was like, really? I was feeling the fantasy. She nailed that choreography. with, mm. And I thought her presence was very like it wasn't over the top and it was just sensual enough that it wanted more, but it didn't like take away. From, I don't know. Like, I just thought mm. it was like, I thought it was layered in like a, such a good way. And then when I watched it this morning, knowing what the critiques were, I, I really tried to search for those moments with her face and I found them, but I didn't find them the first time I watched it. And I, I really felt like, Oh wow, she's amazing. Um, so I really thought she was going to be in the top and then James came out and I was immediately like, oh, James is going to be in the bottom because of like how good Kahana just killed it. And then I didn't watch James the entire time. Um, yeah, so- I, when that, when her, uh, backup dancer came and I was like, well, what, which, which, who, what queen is that? Who is this? I was trying to figure out who that was. I was like, have you seen this woman before? I thought it was, um, a comedian that I've seen and I She was looks familiar. To- yeah. She's so familiar. I was like, who? Yeah, who is she that? TikTok, like, what is this? Who is she? <laughs> or I was like, I mean, we've seen like uh Ginger came out to play, Ginger Minj came out to play Trump in the like Trump unauthorized. Right. So I was like, mm-hmm. I was like, should I know who this is? Yeah. <laughs> like, was this a former queen on drag race? And I'm just like totally blanking right now. Wasn't she on SNL? Like this woman, like the woman yeah, I'm thinking of face, is on SNL. Yeah. Like I, so I was sitting here know. and I'm like, who is it? So I, I'm not gonna lie, that actually took up a lot of my energy during Chase's <laughs> performance. As I sat here and I was like, I know this woman. Where do I know her from? Oh yeah, James is performing. But where what about her? So who that is she? Who is she? <laughs> is, she? is she? Yeah. The um I- yeah, go, go ahead, Amon. I was just gonna say, I feel like James. If we're if we're transitioning to James, mm-hmm. I, I just feel like, um, I feel like all throughout the competition, because I've I've really enjoyed James coming back. Like y'all know, like I've I'm like been like one of James's biz, biggest advocates. I'm so happy that she got a chance to return and like show her stuff. And I feel like we got like a really nice showing from her this season. I do agree that like a lot of a lot of what we have seen has been like a little middling. Like mm-hmm. I think it's hard because she. Um, it's a, she's you know you, one of those things that you have expectations for. She, she's known to be funny. She's known to be campy. She's known to be like a, a, also in in the theater realm. So I feel like I just wanted a, like a little bit more oomph. She gave mm-hmm. a good performance, but there was something about it that seemed just a little understated. And I felt the same way about her Jennifer Coolidge. It was funny. It was great. But I feel like sometimes you would lose Jennifer and go back to James, and it wasn't like it just doesn't ever yeah. go far enough it's always like a nice sensible 74 you know what i mean like <laughs> mm-hmm. but just not I, I need that 100 from her and so like i definitely agree that like she was probably towards the lower end i do not agree with her going home though at mm. all mm-hmm. i agree with that the um so james i think is someone who yeah doesn't like I never see her at a hundred. So I think yeah. that's in line with what Aman is saying is that it's, it's, it's good. It's there. It's solid. At least what we've seen this season, but it hasn't. And I've wanted her to be successful. Like I'm mm-hmm. rooting for you. Rooting for you. Rooting for you. <laughs> and, and I think that that is just, um, I think it's just, it's a little like disheartening to see again, still did a great job, but I think with, yeah what my expectations were. I think it just didn't quite meet them. I agree. I really felt like James, um, I feel like James in season nine, it was all confidence. That was the issue. It wasn't that she was, wasn't prepared. It was just like, she came out and you could tell she was scared the entire Mm -hmm. time. and was like minimizing herself. And she hasn't done that here, but what she's also not doing, like you're saying is hitting the mark a hundred percent. Like her, looks for the most part there have been some very notable exceptions have like been a really great concept but it just doesn't fit right or have been a really interesting idea but it's just not executed a hundred percent there her comedy is you can see it but there's just it's just not going all the way Mm -hmm. and i do think like if you're not gonna win by this point 
I think it's probably a better time for her to go in the competition. I don't, I do think in this situation, I probably would have gone via track record, but I do think that she was way weaker than Kahana in this yeah. challenge. Mm -hmm. So I'm also kind of fine with her also. Cause it means I get to look at Kahana next week, which I'm very excited about. <laughs> um, but I do think that it was her time in the competition to go. Mm -hmm. If she's not going to hit those 100s. One thing I really loved about her performance, though, was the way she painted her lips. And we even got a little like snippet of it in the workroom before they go out there. It was like, that is dramatic. That I love. Now open your mouth a little bit more when you're doing the lip sync. Right. <laughs> like really use those lips. You put them there. Like, so I, um, I think I'm in terms of her going home. My personal was shocked because I was like, yeah. well, Kahana, what we've been told, what have we been told? We just saw Kahana have a vote of, you know, unanimous vote to go home last week if it hadn't been for Heidi quitting. So narratively, I was like, OK, well, this is Kahana's time to go like, you know let's settle that and move on. Yeah. So then mm -hmm. the fact that it was a unanimous vote for James and candy pulled James's lipstick also was a huge shock for me just yeah. based on what we had been told. Then I went back, re looked at the track record and did a little bit of digging. And so just to jump ahead to the elimination a little bit. So there was some tea on James going home, um, that both Nasha Lopez and Kasha Davis said that even in episode one, James was really hard to work with, was crying, threatening to quit. She couldn't nail the choreography. And uh, it, Kasha said that she was giving off like a defeated energy. And there's a YouTube video. Mm. There's receipts for this. So I think if the Queens had sort of put James as like, well, James should have been in the bottom week one. Right. Then James would have had three times in the bottom. Kahana had three times in the bottom and a win. So then if you actually are looking at track record based on what the Queens were mm. thinking, then James maybe was the person who had the worst track yeah. record and in that situation would have gone home. So just to mm. put that in a little bit of context of at least what some of the Queens were thinking, that maybe could explain why you see such a unanimous vote. And for a season right. that has been not afraid to split votes at all whatsoever, why do you get something unanimous here? And I think that that could possibly be the reason. I, also I did think not it's know important. that. Martin. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> I also think that if you look at the queens who are left, I think Kahana has better social relationships with them. So if you're between two people who got equally bad critiques, one more for the look, which we don't know what was edited out, but right. I really felt like <laughs> I was, I don't know. I just kind of felt like James was low for me on both the performance and the look, and it only seems like she got negative critiques about the look mm -hmm. and then kahana only got negative critiques about the performance but was praised for her look i would personally then say okay well if the judges are split i'm gonna go with my personal decision and i'm gonna go with even if i didn't do all the math where like oh well james should have been in the bottom week one or whatever even if you just say, okay, Kahana's win cancels out one of her bottoms, they're tied in that situation. Mm -hmm. I go for who I think did the worst in this challenge. For me, that's James. Yeah. But that's it's, the way I would have done it. It's just interesting, like, once again, just like how the season is produced and which storylines that they would like to follow. Because, yeah, we have no idea that like James has like this whole like defeatist energy in the first episode. Mm. And instead, the narrative that they kind of wanted to go with is that they, they gave her like a robbed goddess sort of edit. And they also made Candy give that confessional about like, oh, James is actually really, really good with this kind of thing. I might need to think about that. They made it seem as if Candy was being the cutthroat diva to get mm -hmm. rid of the competition as opposed to, Oh no, no, no girl. Like James actually has been kind of like effing up this entire time. So it's just like, right. it, it's just like a reminder of just like how much all stars can be produced. And I kind of just wish once again, that they mm -hmm. would just give us, just Feeds. let the Queens be the Queens. Feeds. <laughs> I want you all to know that if they ever did a, dra a drag race live season where they did kind of a feeds thing, I would be quitting my job. I would be, I would be in it. Oh my God. To those feeds, like you wouldn't believe. That'd I'd be, be giving morning updates like Taryn, bitch. Like it would be a whole thing. <laughs> oh, could you imagine Taryn having to do updates? <laughs> well, I don't know. They said something about something at Roscoe's and how that fed into the. I don't know what this means, but <laughs> it's so good. Oh, mess. 
Let's move on to Candy, who is our ultimate winner here, as we've talked about with the no wire hangers. And I, I am, I went back and I looked Beth to look for what you were talking about. Yeah. There's a little bit of at the beginning and uh, she actually does in the lip sync as well. So yeah. it's so interesting to see that she wins uh, g- given And that. they praised her for her lip syncing. And I was like, yeah, were we watching the same person? Are yeah. you confused? It, look, it was yeah. fun. It was high energy. There's a lot of movement, a fun light show. She's got a prop. Everybody loves a good prop. So I think that that makes for a fun performance. But is it enough to really outshine, you know, some of the other performances that we see later? And Beth, mm-hmm. I mean, I know you were especially down on Candy's performance. I mean, compared again. Compared. Yeah, comparatively. Mm-hmm. I, I really no, I'm just really down. I'm just <laughs> um, <laughs> awful. I just <laughs> awful. No, I did feel like her face betrayed her I felt like her lips betrayed her um in this performance and the first five to ten seconds it seemed like she was like doing I go over here and I do this Mm. mark and then I come back and it looked sloppy and not like it took me out of the the performance and then I got right back into it once she started doing the fun stuff with the hanger Mm -hmm. but I I don't know but like, I kind of agree with what Amon said at the beginning, which was like, how much of this was the prop doing the work for her? You know, mm-hmm. so I think I think that she like, I think that she obviously chose smart, like smartly in like which role that she wanted. And she, you know, we saw during the uh, workroom that she kind of fought for it. Um, and I feel like it's the like the sort of like call and response part of her verse that like involves the judges. I think that kind of goes into it too because like if i'm sitting there and i'm a judge of course i'm probably going to remember like the part where i was involved more so than the other ones but even so even through that i'm just like yes it was good but like i'm thinking about lala i'm mm-hmm. thinking about um mm-hmm. uh, uh jessica, alexis. alexis i'm thinking about yeah. jessica mm-hmm. it just it it's just it's just not the same it's just not up to snuff mm-hmm. and kahana at that so so for me, I, Jessica is the next one to perform. And she was the one that I thought was, if Alexis isn't going to win it, it's going to be her. I mm. think especially the narrative of I didn't get my choice because her and Candy auditioned for the wire hangers, which I think Jessica also would have done a great job with that. But she gets the bring me the axe, like Christina, bring me the axe part. And so mm-hmm. she also gets a prop. She gets to smash some rose bushes. How fun is that? She I'm totally so brings the energy. I would say the one knock if I was going to say something is like, maybe I would question the look a little bit but overall i think that she just brought so much energy it was so fun i really love jessica's performance and i was a bit shocked that she didn't ultimately end up winning as soon as alexis was called safe yeah i i would agree that if alexis is called safe she she for me it's so hard she's actually like who i think would have been high safe or just safe when I watched it last night, I think I was higher on her than I am this morning when I rewatched. Mm. Um, and it's not that I didn't think she did a great job. Again, like this is really just splitting hairs here. But I, I kind of felt like the look brought me out of it. I mm. could, I like when you said the points negative. I really do think like that's what brought down her performance was because I was watching and I was like, so she like in the eighties and like you know pretty in pink like what's yeah. happening like this yeah. is not the joan crawford i'm used to in any capacity but like kind of in any way like the hair plus the dress like yeah maybe she had the yeah lift, but yeah it was but, a it definitely looked like it was it was giving more jessica than than joan yeah sure. it was definitely like here's jessica wilde talking about joan crawford and not embodying joan crawford and i think mm-hmm. this is just one of those situations where you know like i think all of us have been in um a, a, like a, a acting situation or something where we've put on a costume or makeup or you know you put on the dress for the formal party and you're like oh i'm it now like i i'm in the moment and i felt like this did the opposite for her which was like oh i am jessica about to go perform um Mm -hmm. and that's why i again i i'm being really specific Mm -hmm. here but i think that she for me would would have been just safe that's fair yeah i think i think i I agree i think that she's definitely towards the top but probably on the safer end yeah Mm -hmm. All right, La La Re is next. Uh, and this is from the Mildred Pierce. I'm back. My career is going to have its resurgence era. And 
I've just been so pleased with Lala overall. She's been such a bright light to have on this season. And I think that this episode of Mon was no exception. Yeah, I mean, the, the the thing for me is just the slapping part. That's all I can think. I like went back and rewatched it. It's just so good. It's so funny. The timing is just perfect. Her cadence throughout the entire rap is just really, really good. It's just, it was a, it was a good part for her. And I just had so much fun watching her. I really, I thought that there was a really strong possibility that she was going to win this one. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, Lala, like, let's go. Like, middle of the season, starting to pick it up. Like, I was like, okay, I'm here for it. So, I think she did a, a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. I I agree that I think she did a fantastic job. I think she should have been um, if if Alexis was going to win and if Kahada <laughs> was in the bottom, mm-hmm. I felt like Lala should have won. And for me, she's definitely the third best for me. Like I thought Kahano mm-hmm. was second. So I'm telling mm-hmm. you, my judging is completely different all over the place. Mm-hmm. But for me, what happened with Lala, um, and I didn't catch this as much last night as I did this morning, is she starts off kind of slow. Mm. She doesn't really settle in, but the moment she settles in about 15 seconds in, it's straight fire. It's mm-hmm. energy. It's precision. Um, she's actually tra- channeling Grace Jones a little bit in addition to doing Joan Cof- <laughs> Crawford. And so that's why I was like, oh, Grace interesting. But Stone when Crawford. she's doing like the, the <laughs> face stuff, I was like, ah, oh, you better work. That's great. But I, I do kind of feel like it took her a second to get into it. Um, her lip sync was also a little off in the very beginning. Mm. But that's the some of the negative stuff there. Otherwise, I thought she was fierce. I thought she did have like funny. very intense. Like her eyes did look mm-hmm. very... Like, I can see the Grace Jones inspiration there yeah. to a certain mm-hmm. extent. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We got to talk about Alexis Michelle. Okay. First of all, she gets the Don't F With Me Fellas segment, which, like, is, and she talks about this when they're trying to decide what role is, it, which roles they're going to have, which is this is, what was it? What's the term for it, Beth? The patter it's a patter song. song. The yep. Patter song. I'm learning. The patter <laughs> song. Fast. Such a challenge, but if you can nail it, this could seriously be a feather in your cap. And totally. her face when she was announced safe. And I think it was also the the comparison between Jimbo and her. Like Jimbo is just beyond excited to be safe. Like, oh my God, thank God. And Alexis just face crack, trying not to jan, and then <laughs> like <laughs> has this when she says okay her voice cracked and i was just like oh my god she said she said thank you and she went thank you thank you that's what it was yes when her voice cracks i was just like oh no (laughs) the producers drove out out heidi they're gonna drive out alexis well that's what i was thinking is like you know we were talking about headline in the very beginning i was thinking to myself like um new queen becomes heidi in closet like (laughs) yes the undervalued queen (laughs) And I'm going to be honest, like, I think Heidi was more egregiously um, under edited for how great she was doing. Alexis, at least, has been high very a lot in this competition, but still hasn't nailed that win. I am. I am shocked. I am shocked all the way around. There wasn't anything missed. The facial expressions were there. The lip sync was tight. She nailed the enunciation. The key with doing a patter song or anything that's really quick is that you have to over enunciate everything and then it comes out really fast. But it's you can't really do that mm-hmm. if you don't have the training for it. And clearly she does. And I thought like she nailed the choreography. You're doing a hoedown to a patter song. Like it's crazy. The whole point of a patter song was meant for those people that when we were adjusting to having musical theater, it was for those people who are really good actors but can't sing worth a damn, but they have a good sense of rhythm. So they can do a little dance and now I can talk and talk and talk and talk and to the beat. And like, you know, one of the major general one from uh, Pirates of Penzance. I was and, about to say, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, in company doing the not getting married today. Um, you know, there's there's a history of this. And even Hamilton took that and, tra- and made it the guns and ships, but it made it a full rap. Right. Mm -hmm. And so this has a history of taking somebody who's not necessarily who's a fun character for the show. And this is their moment. And I was like, if you F this up, you're in the bottom. If you Mm -hmm. nail it, you there's no way you shouldn't win. And I'm 
utterly shocked she didn't win. Not that she wasn't just in the top. Like, she should have won. Period. Mm-hmm. The play yeah, that was... Look, look was, her look was amazing. Sorry. Oh, and the look, yeah, she had yeah. a good look, too, yeah. yeah. To, to play devil's advocate, mm-hmm. I, 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 I think that I've arrived at the conclusion as well that she should have just won. I think I, I, I believe that. But if I'm if I'm playing devil's advocate, I feel like there is a bit of like sterilization when it comes to her performance here. Mm. I think we all expect that she's going to do well. And therefore, when she does well, it's not much of a surprise. Narratively speaking, mm-hmm. should that mean that she shouldn't win? Of course not. But I guess I kind of there there are other performances that I'm like thinking about a little bit more that made me feel a little bit some of something, I guess. Mm. And I guess. I guess I, I'm just like thinking about Lala and like just like her entire performance. I'm like, oh my god, that was so good. Where, but I wasn't ex- necessarily expecting Lala to do mm-hmm. well. Um, so I guess there's there might have been a little bit of that when it comes to the judging and also just like production just rigging the thing for Candy to win to begin with. But um, I I do think that she should have won here. I think that it was it was she obviously she recorded well, she danced mm-hmm. well. I kept thinking that her hat was gonna fall off the whole time, but other than that, <laughs> yeah, like I think this was definitely Alexis's to to take, and the fact that she didn't get it, I you know I think just once again speaks to what production be doing. So when she first came out, I thought she had nailed the look the best, mm-hmm. and so I always kind of had that in the back of my mind. I was like, oh wow, she like this looks amazing. She looks amazing. Let's see how she performs. But I can really see what Aman is saying when coming off of for me both Jessica and Lala of this like. This was that was just fun to watch. And then not that Alexis's wasn't fun to watch, but I think what hers has is that technical element. Yeah. Almost like level of difficulty. If you think about gymnastics, right? And you have or or diving or whatever, the where you have, okay, this this gymnastics routine, the difficulty is capped at a nine. Okay. And you have a queen go out and they nail it and they get a nine. This level of difficulty is a 9.5. They come out and nail it. Then they have overall a higher score just because theirs technically is more difficult. And I feel like that with Alexis, where like her level of difficulty was set so high. And the fact that she was able to come out and nail it should count for more points (laughs) in my like artificial scoring system. And I think that that's probably the reason why I would have given her the win is one, she nailed the look two highest level of difficulty and three just knocked it out of the park. Even though, yes, I do see like the sterilization I'm on that you're talking about. I think because Mm -hmm. of those other factors in a, in a a game of, of inches of centimeters, I would have given her the millimeter over the win. I also do that. One of the things that I think about, especially in past seasons is how often they care about, are you standing out in the background for these kind of challenges? And she was the only one I ever looked for in the background because she was reacting and doing the choreography in a way that didn't look like it was like, yes, she was doing it with the group, but she was an individual back Mm. there. And I, they normally praise that. And I was like, Oh, that's so weird that they didn't do that this week. Um, I definitely agree with the sterilization thing. I almost feel like it's it's not sterilization as much as we've seen how she acts. And that's we just expect that now. Mm-hmm. Um, like when she's in the background doing this kind of stuff, I immediately got Chris Jenner. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was like, OK, so I definitely understand what you both are saying. But I agree. I think the difficulty thing needs like I think about the Divas Live where you had Ben de la Creme who had like one of the hardest things to do and it was funny but they also this part was so much better because of it and like mm-hmm. if you can nail it it's just like the part that okay julie andrews rapping is great but then you had shangela who really didn't have to do anything at all and just got to let the part be comical and that still has always bothered me and i believe in thorgy gate justice for thorgy <laughs> we're like she was oh, given Jesus gross. gross. <laughs> <laughs> um, where I sit back and I think to myself, like, what were you going to do with Stevie Nicks when Shangela just got to go? And now I guess I walk over here. Okay. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I think not that that's the same exact thing, but it's I have always felt like give the people who have smaller parts and do something great with it justice people who have something technically really difficult and they pull off even if you're not as excited or felt the energy give them the roses there yeah and i think especially the extra nail in the coffin it's not that she just 
didn't win. It's that she, she was, was safe. safe, meaning that the judges thought there were three other bitches that were better than her. <laughs> and like, if I'm Alexis Michelle, one, I didn't win snatch games. So I'm a little bit upset about that, but fine. You can be like, well, Jimbo nailed this cracked out Shirley temple. I did a good job, but fine. I probably was second here. No, no, you're just, you are probably fourth, right? Assuming that you think you did better right. than Jimbo, which I would hope. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you she would know that so that must be extra like gut wrenching yeah. oh and i know i mean talk the preview for next week we'll it get it has there, to but... be alexis oh it has to be alexis one i didn't see her so it must right. have been her and also like narratively or even not even narratively just like with what the hell is happening how is it not alexis it just seems like the same exact thing that Heidi went through, which was first, it's not being recognized by the judges. And then it seems like there's an interpersonal conflict in the workroom. So we see both of those things. And I will say Alexis, I mean, is the ultimate, like, I just lost the Oscar that I was favored to win kind of thing. The gracious, like, you know, clapping for the other people and holding it together and untucked and like getting too untucked with just Jimbo and not mentioning it at all, at least from what we saw. Right. Didn't mention it all and just had like, wow, well, th this is great. And that kind of thing. I, the entire time I sat back and I was like, I know that feeling when like, you know, I was out in, first in like winners at war and had to be like, mm -hmm great job everybody <laughs> and you're like keep it together for that entire time like those kind of things are like i was i could see that she was trying real hard so i think that'll bottle up oh yeah. i I, I know I, I totally recognize the same thing I was exp I was like oh my god I can't wait to get to untucked I can't wait to get to untucked yeah. and I mean she helped to to her I guess credit I don't know but also at the same time like express your feelings if you feel yeah. upset I think you just you are allowed to feel that way I mean I, mean, I don't know if this is maybe this is like the optimist to me I don't know if this will really have any future bearing on seasons um but I just feel like yeah like if there are more moments like Heidi's moment if there if, if it is Alexis um, next week that is threatening to quit and it has something to do with the way that judging is happening. Like, yes, yeah, there's a piece to me that's like, oh, you can't always cry when you don't get your way. But at the same time, it's like, come on. Like, it, there is clear production interference here. Yeah. And like, can, mm -hmm. can we stop? Like all of these queens are super, super talented. You're getting a competition. You're getting one. Like you're, it's it, and it's interesting to watch. Like a like a competition like this is very interesting to watch because so many of them did so well. Like, y and right. you have to nitpick. So to to give it to someone who clearly wasn't the best and then mm -hmm. to make someone who was clearly the best safe and then i, I don't know this, the whole thing is just like and we go through it season after season and we're still going to be here we're still going to watch obviously because we love the show and we love the queens but it's just like eventually it's like production do we, why are you like this do you have mm -hmm. to be like this like just it's like evie's like, argument queen. has legs thank you Come on. like I like my kid is like, do you think you're not going to have an entertaining show if you don't do this? Like, I guess that's really my question because you have so right. many people, both Queens and fans who are vocal about what's going on. Like, what is, what are you scared of? Right. That's what right. I really want to know. It's like, do you think it won't be good if you give the Queens their flowers who deserve it? Like, do you think that there won't be enough natural intrigue? I don't know. Like I would just do a test, do one season where you don't. Yeah. Story. Yes, but then also stand behind your casting decisions because if you're standing back and being like oh it's because we don't think we have a cast that mm -hmm. can deliver on this level like, they're drag kind of queens that they can the deliver that yeah exactly what kind of message does that send to the queens themselves like I, I hated the i mean i thought it was funny but I, a piece of me it never it never really fully sat right with me when um Oh my god, I'm forgetting her name, which I guess is a testament to her casting. Joan um, Rivers. No, not Joan Rivers. No. <laughs> what is her name? Um, on season out thir Shirley Temple. thirteen, she comes in. She was the bald queen that would sometimes wear wigs, but preferred to be bald. Oh, Joey J. Jo 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 Joey J. And she came she's in, and her opening bitch. line was, "She's a gay ass bitch." Gay she ass came ass. in, and her opening, her entrance line was, "Filler queen." Like. Yeah, it was funny, but at the same time, I'm like, oh, I hate that they know that they're being cast in a way. I hate that. Like, just, just let the queens be themselves and come in, and like, it's okay to have archetypes. It's okay to have different people with different skill sets. That's that's fine. But like, just, I, I just want for How these queens to be able to come. People in. that you think can all win the crown. Exactly. I would love to see. Look, as I'm not gonna lie, like. I thought season 15 had so many good contenders. Like the first out being Irene, I still mm -hmm. to this day will tell you that I feel mm -hmm. like Irene has the talent, the mm -hmm. looks, 
the energy and the personality to go far and make all good the effing television. way yep. she has everything like i want a season where every single elimination is like oh my god they were exactly. somebody for the crown i hate that i have to watch being like okay the first half of the season i'm gonna be upset once about who gets eliminated and then the end of it i'm like okay so now is when it gets interesting because all the quote-unquote people built for drag race are Man still left around yep. because again if you are not if you don't go far in drag race that doesn't mean you're not good at drag it means that you're not like maybe not built for what the producer's idea of what drag race should be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly Sorry, all I have is I'm a gay ass bitch. I'm Joey. I'm Joey J. J. <laughs> Stuck in my head on repeat from Phenomenon. Oh, oh that song is Phenomenon so good. is so good. It's so good though, especially no, no, I think no, no, because no, 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 no. like starting with Denali too, who just knocks it out of the park. I still oh. quote that verse all the time. Oh my gosh. So um, yeah, triple let's on these sluts because I like it rough. rough. That's probably my favorite <laughs> line. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> we we have one more queen that we got to talk about and that is Jimbo. And as we talked about, Jimbo is safe and is extremely happy to fall under the safe category given the fact that we open up this episode with Jimbo revealing some vulnerable feelings about like drag queens are known for being performers and every time i get on that stage to lip sync i shat the bed so like having that in the back of her head going into this week must have been really tough to deal with so i can yeah. totally understand why she's so excited that she was safe yeah i was pleased to see the chink in the armor I always love those moments of the the favorite queens that like show some you know this is not like what i do some mm -hmm. vulnerability and i feel like um yeah, I just feel like with Jimbo, I'm not really sure what it is. I think when it comes, because this was, essentially was another lip sync, even though she was lip syncing her own her own voice. I think she just is very self-conscious about like giving a good performance. And her performance in this brusical wasn't bad by any means. But there, it was kind of like a similar to what I felt about James. It, it, something just, there was like a film over it. It just felt very muted and just like tentative and unsure. Mm -hmm. um and a, a piece of me is like jimbo do you hide behind your tits a lot of the time it's like is that is it just the boobs and that's it like it's because I, I we know that you have a personality we know that you're funny like maybe she's just more of like a, a personality queen maybe she just needs a talk show maybe that's maybe yeah. that's what mm -hmm. jimbo is all about maybe it's not the and that's fine that's, that's yeah. completely fine, i think a but... jimbo sketch show would be so good Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. I think so too. But yeah, stop relying on that chess play. I think uh, <laughs> I I think she did a more than serviceable job, which I guess is not a compliment, but I felt like I did think that Candy and James were weaker than her. And mm -hmm. I would have put her as, you know, the third bottom person which in this particular week is a safe person. I think mm -hmm. that she was exactly where she needed to be. Her vocals were okay. They weren't like incredibly funny or whatever. And her acting and her energy was there. Um, did she mess up the choreo? Probably. But did I notice? Not really. Because of like mm -hmm. her characterization, you know? Um, I like, I agree with you, Iman. It was great to see the vulnerability, but I'm not going to lie. In the very beginning, I was convinced it was a whole like joke that she was doing because that's kind of her personality is to like make fun of situations like that. Mm -hmm. and so when yeah. she was sitting there crying i was like oh, okay girl I'm like what's it coming <laughs> out that you're like i'm just kidding i won like blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. i and it never happened then i was like oh i feel like a dick now <laughs> <laughs> like, ha, ha. i'm like ha ha, ha girl you're yeah. laughing oh, you're crying oh, you're being serious oh yes tell me about your inner cyber tour somewhere please. oh my god mm -hmm. i look i think jimbo first of all extremely strategic with the choice right because she goes for the you know the older joan and mm -hmm. that allows her, I think, to not have to be as sharp and precise with the choreography because she is playing this older character. So right. I think that that was really strategic. But there's something about her movements. And it's not just in this performance. It's every time I've seen her lip sync, except for Cracked Out Shirley Temple. If she could bring that like yeah. weird tap dance routine to the lip syncs. I think she could do. I think she could do well. Like the thing, Shirley Temple literally danced like that. Like she yeah. actually was not a good dancer. It's just she was freaking cute. I thought you were about yeah. to say that Shirley Temple really was cracked out. <laughs> well, 
towards the end of her career, like you said, Amon. No. Well, but yeah, I, so yeah, so yes. I mean, it was it was a good impression, also. But like, let's just avoid it from the Shirley right. Temple of it all, and let's just look at the way she moved. It was so yeah. fast, and like, I've never seen Jimbo. Move. When I think of Jimbo lip syncing, and it, this is also in the first season that she was on of Canada's Drag Race, when she's in the mm -hmm. back, just kind of swaying like this. Like yeah. the, when I think of Jimbo dancing, this is kind of what I think of. This like very slow swaying. And she even has it in this performance with the way that her arms move. She moves a little bit like a jellyfish tentacle that's underwater. Yeah. And that like, but she also has the ability clearly to move in a very like, cracked out way which i think would yeah. be super fun so she yeah. just always just has like, like during her lip sync she just always feels like it's just like a i'm just happy to be here kind of yeah. thing going on. Yeah. and it's like like, uh, like it, it feels like she's one of those people that grew up and people would make fun of her dancing and it just mm -hmm. stuck with her and she can't work through it <laughs> like and if that's the case girl Go to therapy and get over it so that we can see you be the yeah. performer that we know that you are. Like, you can do it. Like, I know that. Go to a rave. <laughs> Go to a rave and just have a good time. Okay. Just like, do your own movements. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that as a fellow person who like loved a performing. Swear. I oh. am. I, I mean, she does dance. Like, all she's missing is to put up the one arm. Mm -hmm. And then she's, you know, drunk white girl at a party, you know? Like, <laughs> so I totally get that. But I think I think what both of you are saying is that, yes, Liana, she does, like, the the low, like, the slow body roll arm mm -hmm. stuff. But then her head is kind of in the neck or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Do that. And so when she's dancing around, you're like, I can't understand the energy. Are you fast? Are you frantic? Are you relaxed? Mm -hmm. What is yeah. happening? I think that's the issue. And I honestly feel like that's how I would perform. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, same. I, there's something really like uh, now sort of mesmerizing about it. Um, yeah. But I, I think I think it is a little bit of compensate. And look, I'm not saying that she needs to come out and like hit the choreo and be a Kahana. Right. Like, that's not what right. I'm saying. I think it's just a confidence thing. Sort yeah. of what Amon was it's alluding a to. Thing. Yeah. yeah, like a presence confidence thing that she's has such presence when she's doing yeah. all of the acting and the improv. And then it does, even though she's a giant, like she sh does sort of shrink a little bit. It feels mm -hmm. like when she's performing on stage, when it comes to mm -hmm. anything that's, you know, musically inclined. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. it could just be confidence because I think, I mean, Jimbo to me is a superstar. I've loved Jimbo from when we saw her on the first season. And, uh, and I just want to like, you got it, girl, you can do it. I believe you in you. Well, also some of the most beloved Queens have never won a lip sync. Like Katya or has never only won lip one lip sync mm. the entire mm. time. And it was against Sasha Bell. Okay. Mm -hmm. All the rest of the times. And I would argue that she's more entertaining to watch than half of the other lip syncers that we've said. So like, just because RuPaul has not pointed to you and said, Oh, you've won a lip sync. Doesn't mean that you aren't talented at lip syncing right. or that you're not giving a good show. I guarantee <laughs> if I were in a club and you danced that way, I would be tipping you. Yeah. And not just because it's customary. <laughs> I just keep thinking about her slipping on that feather last week. <laughs> and Poor, that was why to I see her like, mention. Jimbo, no. <laughs> it's like just, one feather. Come on. <laughs> like completely empty stage. And so right? much moment. She steps on the one feather that fell off. Like, I'm just like, and she walked back to get to it. Like, <laughs> She she really did. Oh, and I also you have to remember too that she has this is the first show she's been on where she can actually like properly win money throughout the competition, not just at the end. Um, and so it's also got to be really frustrating to know that well, that ten thousand dollars of mine has gone to this person, that ten thousand yeah. dollars of mine has now gone to this person, and that ten thousand dollars like she's lip sync three times, she could have had thirty thousand dollars, and they, mm -hmm. instead that money has gone to somebody else. So mm -hmm. I imagine mm -hmm. there's a little bit of frustration there, but she's not going to say that part out loud. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well. And that's why I think at the beginning of the episode, her feeling embarrassed for the lip syncs. Like I did believe that that's all genuine. Yeah, yeah because, I, I did not. <laughs> well, yeah, we know, Beth. Thank you. <laughs> because just, oh, yeah, I can't imagine. Like, that must be incredibly, incredibly frustrating. Yeah. But, and I'm glad that they, I'm glad, I mean, I don't, I could be wrong, but I don't remember seeing any of it. They, and they could have like, just said it, like, off camera. But I'm glad that the Queens let her have that, even, even though she won. Because it's like, yeah, like, you can be on top of the world. And, yes, you can win the competition or whatever. But, like, 
if you can't get this one thing that you're just trying so hard to achieve, it's it's sort of yeah. like it it makes your win feel a little, it's not it's, it doesn't it doesn't feel as sweet. And I'm glad right. that like the queens like let her have that moment of humanity, even though yeah. she is still smashing the competition. Well, it yeah. doesn't feel like a full win because you don't right. get like there, yes, you've won, but that just puts you in like the next level. Then you have another thing you need to compete on to like actually right. win. So that's mm -hmm. yeah, that must be really tough. And she's yeah. actually had to go against a lot of really tough lip sync assassins. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. I love Angeria. We're going to get to it. But man, if Jimbo had gone against Angeria, I think she could have stood a chance. Yeah, so did I. I was like, yeah, maybe she should have been here yesterday because Jasmine Kennedy, like, that was never going to happen. Like, I was, seriously, I was like, yeah. okay, here you go. What, Pangina, Jasmine Kennedy, and who was the first person? Or The first person was Pangina, but I'm trying so to who's remember. Who's the second then that she had to lip sync against? Oh my god, there have been so many of them. Uh, who yeah, I know. That's why I'm like totally blanking. Um, which was the second one? Was it that... Sh Chanel? Let's no. see. It was, was it yes, it was Chanel. Yes. Chanel. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's talk about the runway looks because we are celebrating not just one, but two icons in this episode. We get the Grace Jones inspired runway. Beth, were there any highlights in the night of a thousand Grace Joneses? Uh, I thought Alexis is, was mm -hmm. so good. Mm -hmm. It was so incredible. I loved the look. Um, and I know that we've said this before. Alexis is so interesting because she has like a very broad, like top portion, which she has to really play with the proportion so that it comes out like more curvy and feminine. And I think she always knows how to do it so well without looking too like, um, like mannish and big. And not that that's mm -hmm. a bad thing. Like women do that. And especially like Grace Jones definitely had broader shoulders and, and that, or not was, but like, you know what I mean? Um, and I just, I loved this because I thought the proportions were exactly what you would expect for something for Grace Jones. Well, like, it looks like she's bald, even though she's not. We can we know that she has, uh, you know, some hair up in the top. I just I don't know. I loved this. I thought it was as soon as she turned the corner, I went Grace Jones inspired. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something different from Alexis. Yeah. When I think of Alexis, I think of like her in a very elegant, stunning ball gown. And so mm -hmm. to have something that is one, a unique material two a unique silhouette and three to do something that really, I think, matches the prompt was really outstanding for her and again a further reason why i was upset for her when she didn't Agreed. end up winning this week yeah i think a lot of the runways were great um one of the things and this is just like a, a side note for me i i sort of like loved um the the like seeing so many queens of color um have to be um, Joan Crawford and then seeing um, mm -hmm. white queens or non-black queens having to be Grace Jones. I just sort of like yeah. loved like the cultural exchangeness of it all. It just felt really just fresh and interesting and lovely and a just in a in a in a really cool and good way. Um, mm -hmm. I I am sympathizing with James Mansfield because I feel like she lost weight and that might be the reason as to why a lot of her looks have been a little bit ill-forming mm -hmm. um but to, with that being said i kind of agree a little bit even though i don't really necessarily like the way that michelle was like yay last week when she <laughs> I told her that <laughs> it kind of felt it was like okay michelle like let, let's let's be respectful now um i kind of agree a little bit more with what she's saying because like if you if you did lose the weight then you then you know that you lost the weight and it's like right you have to make the adjustments for these for these looks you can't just be like i lost the weight and just come out with anything on like hem them up get them you know do whatever you need to do to make it a little bit more form fitting. But that being said, I did, I really did like her look. I thought it was like, mm -hmm. and I love the, I love all the versatility that James has really been giving us this season. Like, I mean, granted, we only saw one of her looks the last time, <laughs> but <laughs> it, it just, you know, she's a versatile queen. Like this image that I have in her, of my, of her in my mind, I feel like has been shifted a lot because of what she's given us on the look, on the runways. Mm -hmm. I liked um, Alexis Michelle's as well, but I also feel like, um, it also was just a little, a little loose, just a little mm. loose. I was upset about what they said to Lala Ray because we know that Lala is a big Grace Jones fan. Yeah. Um, and Ugh. I'm like, if you want if she wanted to go with that look, because that's the look that she found the most inspiring and the one that she felt the most comfortable. And that's what she, when she thinks of Grace Jones, that's what she thought of. I'm fine with that. Like I get what RuPaul was trying to say in that, like, 
yes, like she's probably the most physically similar to Grace. So you were kind of expecting like something to be for her to just pop. But at the same time, like if that's what La La Re wanted to give for Grace, then let La La Re give that for Grace. And I thought it was a good look. I don't think that there was, was really anything wrong with it. So imagine yeah. going from Kimono Gate where everybody wore the same thing and being upset that people didn't wear different things to now being upset <laughs> that someone's wearing the thing that you didn't expect them to wear. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, I just that was like not a valid critique. It's like, oh, I wanted you to do something different. Like, what? <laughs> like, I was like, this is different. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, we wanted you to do something we expected from Grace Jones. First of all, what what have you ever expected from Grace Jones? That is like the number one thing. And number two, like, I thought this was awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I was obsessed with this. I mean, the fact that they, like, they could pull a reference look picture, okay? Right? So, like, there's clearly this is something that was inspired by a Grace Jones look that is very similar mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. in what universe are you going to tell me that this does for some reason doesn't count and i think especially like if anyone she's the one who has that reverence yeah. for grace jones and has done so much of you know previous looks i mean like it just she looks so good she's got the like the face thing like everything about it i thought was really mm -hmm. good and for her to get the negative critique about it i just felt like was unnecessary especially because she doesn't end up being in the bottom anyway so it's not like you need to justify be her being in the bottom for i your think that what judging. they were trying to do is justify not having her as like the winner the winner yeah yeah maybe yeah. <sighs> whatever annoying <laughs> annoying uh all right any anybody else's that you want to uh oh we had candy with the triangle girls of the world look. okay that was the other thing i was like i like that this is your own interpretation of it that's great um but i didn't get grace jones from that i just got like geometric shapes so maybe this was me trying to justify why she should have been in the bottom but i was very i was like okay you're wearing triangles I'm like yeah are you just being like every 90s background of everything ever? Like, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I thought it was fine. I wouldn't have knocked yeah. her for it. I No, definitely wouldn't knock her. I'm just saying like in general, there were stronger ones. Yeah, right. Exactly. I think that that's the thing is, is that you when you're in the game of splitting hairs, it's got to be like top tier. Right. Part of the thing. OK, so I'm a little bored with Kahana <laughs> and like. I was excited. I am excited, but I think like the showgirlness, and maybe this is part of the reason why I rated her performance a little bit lower than the two of you of like, I just want to see some, I love sparkles. Don't get me wrong, but like, I want something different now. And I feel like a RuPaul's Drag Race judge, like saying this. <laughs> yeah. But like, I, I get Vegas, obviously be Vegas, do Vegas. That is your thing. Dr you know, Vegas showgirl out of every look. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. In terms of seeing a set of looks on the runway, I would appreciate at some point once in a while, just a little bit more variety there. And I think that right. that's part of the reason why maybe I rated her a little bit lower this week, just because I didn't think that her look um, for me was as tippy top tier as some of the other ones, just because I'm getting a little bit bored with the um, Vegas of it all. Yeah. Did she have the same reference look as Mrs. Kasha Davis for the Fame Games? Because I'll tell you what, Mrs. Kasha Davis had it to a T. No, I believe their no their uh, inspiration looks were different. So this was at okay. Which performance? I don't remember. Um, but but again, like so, if you look at the re so if you're watching mm -hmm. the YouTube video, you can see the looks that we're pulling up. I mean. Again, look at the reference look and then look at what Kahana mm -hmm. does. And I think, again, definitely inspired. You can see it with the bodice, the shape. But it's definitely giving me more Vegas showgirl, maybe flamenco dancer <laughs> sort of yeah. thing that I am seeing with Grace Jones. I would have loved the There's too much red. There's too much red. If she made the cape portion on the bottom black and, the, and not had it like shifted to the side, if she'd mm -hmm. had it kind of like that and still kept the petals even if the petals were black or something, I think. I think or, when, or I, when, red, I th I mean. when I think of Grace Jones, I think of like sleek, like straight edges, not in a necessarily a candy muse geometry right. way, even though we do see that. I just don't see a lot of like blending. Like I feel like it's very angular, like her jaw, mm. very angular. Like those are the things that I think of when I think of Grace Jones is very clear defined borders. 
And yeah. so that I didn't necessarily like get as much with Kahana's look. But again, splitting hairs. Side note, Kahana in that picture looks like Rihanna. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Just kind of the oh, shit is kinda blurry far weird. away. Yeah, <laughs> from far away. But in, <laughs> when, you know, like when there's like eight pixels in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the lip sync. Angeria comes out as the lip sync assassin. I was surprised. I was like, oh, this isn't someone I would have thought of Beth when I was thinking about lip sync assassins. But then I was reminded, I guess she did win, what, two lip syncs, I guess, in her season? I don't care. I know you said Beth's name, but I'm <laughs> pissed. I'm mad. I'm still mad at her for her and Willow Pill for that monstrosity of a lip sync the telephone i'm still i'm holding a grudge <laughs> i don't care uh, when, she, when she revealed herself i rolled my eyes and i love angeria aside from all of that i think that she is definitely the southern belle of atl but i'm holding a grudge whatever and she did not bring it in this lip thing sorry i love angeria mm-hmm. but i mean Candy wiped the floor with her with this lip sync. I was like so thrilled. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if they were just like, let's give Candy a layup. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. I, don't I, know. I thought this was so clearly a Candy win. Like there was, Angeria did not hold a candle to it. The best part of her being there was what she said at the end when she was like, I do birthdays, I do funerals. Yes. Like, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Angeria was sort of robotic also in her performance, whereas Candy was very sexy. Like, yeah. with mm-hmm. you got all the slapping going on, which is very sexy, but just in the way that she moves, it just so much more sensual. Oh, and I was really happy that they picked a Grace Jones song for this mm-hmm. week because we've like, yeah, of course, why not? Um, and so I think that this was for sure agree with you that this is a win for for Candy. I mean, it I don't know, it wasn't even really close. <laughs> no. All right. Let's see. Is there anything else that we want to talk about? We already kind of talked about some of the voting nonsense. Oh, yeah, that was the other thing when we talked about like, oh, it was sold from a strategic perspective. Alexis Michelle also is like, oh, I could be strategic in voting out James, even though that right. maybe potentially wasn't the actual reason why. Right. Yeah. Okay. Next week. Oh, boy. The preview for next week. Mm-hmm. It starts so unassuming. Next week, maxi challenge, improve, you know, you have to improv in the RuPaul's Drag Race crime scene series, whatever. And then all of a sudden we get the, oh, she's packing herself. uh, Like she's going to leave. There's a lot of drama. RuPaul shows up to straighten the Queens out or something like that. Oh my God. What, like, what is going to happen next week? I don't know. I think they're trying to paint it like it's going to be Kahana who's like trying to go home, but I really think it's going to be Alexis if they're so. I know we've already ta- said that, but yeah. I do we do we think well. it's like a little bit of a bait and switch where like that sort of like part of the of the story is like pretty self-contained and RuPaul coming RuPaul coming in and saying I'm going to straighten some some is like not about that and probably about like the challenge and yeah. they're just like editing it in a way that like it's oh my god it's good address the queen's quitting because like i feel like it's probably going to be a non-starter and like someone threatens to quit they don't quit and then you know what i mean oh you're muted liana oh well in that case, I didn't want you didn't want to hear my iced coffee slurpees. That's what I was <laughs> muting for. Um, here's the thing: I think they really underplayed the Heidi quitting. So because they un- sort of underplayed Heidi quitting, then I'm like, okay, well, this is not going to be another quit because I don't think right. that they if they're going to edit the Heidi one this way, why wouldn't they edit this one this way? So I think it could just be a lot of hullabaloo for nothing. And whether or not it is related to the challenge or the quitting thing or whatever, I feel like it's, I don't think anybody else is going to leave. I think that it could be some shenanigans and then we're just going to move on from that. The fact that they included so much in the preview, I think it's just to get us hyped maybe. And then like nothing's going to happen. I really don't think anything's going to happen. I bet RuPaul, like you said, I'm on. This is just what he says when he comes into the workroom and is like, I'm here to straighten you all out on how to do improv. So we're going to do a little training session where you come up here and you improv with me. Like, I bet that's literally what mm-hmm. it's going to be. But they're like, OK, if we put this all the stuff in here with Alexis versus Candy, which I've been waiting for 
all season. I've been wanting an Alexis versus Candy moment, and it seems like we might get one, and I'm very excited. Uh, mm. Just because I was like, these two queens are dramatic as hell. Um, so we'll see. I, I just... Okay, it's all from the same day because Candy is wearing this like sweater vest thing. So they're in the fight. There's another fight. And then later when Rue comes in, Candy is still wearing the same sweater vest. So at least this yeah. all <laughs> happened in one day and okay. wasn't over the course of multiple days, which, you know, could have been the case. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any other little edit reading clues. I don't know. Kahana looks really upset, too. We'll see. Jimbo's acting a fool, throwing a pen behind her, but that could just be Jimbo being Jimbo. <laughs> right. Yeah. Is it real or not? Who knows? <laughs> okay. Oh, man. That does it for us this week. Oh, <sighs> yeah. All right. <laughs> we are, what, halfway through the season? We're on episode six. There's typically, what, 10, 12 episodes per season. Yeah. So we are chugging along. It's actually kind of wild to think that we're down to, what, the final six, six. now? I know. It's oh crazy. Gosh. Yeah, that's really Just wild. Just flying by. Six or seven? I can't even think. Wait, how many? I thought we were at... Okay, Alexis, Kahana, Candy, Jessica, La... Wait. Jimbo. Six. Okay. Yes. Yes, six. Okay. 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 I can count. I oh can't. Oh, my God. My <laughs> effing Siri has been so annoying lately. Like, I said crazy, and then it started playing crazy by Niles Barkley. Like, what the <laughs> I haven't heard that song in 15 years. <laughs> could have been worse. Could have been worse. It, it could have been worse. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Although I'm actually surprised it didn't play Crazy in Love. If it is I like, know. Yeah, it's a targeted like, ad song. Your series doesn't know, me, know you. Yeah, your series yeah. doesn't even know you. <laughs> All right. Let's get out of here. Beth, where can people find you on social media? Anything you want to talk about? Um, you can find me at Augusta Wind 11 on all my social media platforms. And you can just catch me chilling here on the uh, RuPaul's Drag Race for Hap Up podcast for the time being. Yes. And Amon, what about you? You can find me here. Um, check out the podcast um, that Liana mentioned at the beginning where we drafted a bunch of Big Brother seasons. It was a great time. And vote for me. Vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> Root two, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it was really it, I had a lot of fun doing it yeah. even if it was just to talk through the seasons I got a little confused on my strategy about halfway through and shifted <laughs> <laughs> what I was doing <laughs> but I guess still vote for me if you want to yeah. anyway it was just a blast it, it honestly made me want to go back and rewatch every season yeah. of Big Brother which I do Me not too. have time for <sighs> even though Big Brother got pushed into August but I might still try to do it anyway in the interim 1.75 you know, is going to be my best friend with rewatching <laughs> Big Brother and you can find me on Twitter at Liana R-H-A-P I was also on um, I guess it was two weeks ago hit it hit it hit or quit with the Hot Wheels episode but they have moved on to Stars on Mars which I have to recommend if you are a fan mm -hmm. of reality tv chaos some drama entertainment i would really recommend stars on mars i know it sounds so stupid and it is in like the best way possible the show figured out the right tone and the right cast to make it very entertaining it's only Where one episode it on? um it's on fox but i think you can get it on hulu if you have hulu okay. yeah so stars on mars I, again, very much recommend it. I had a really fun time with episode one, and I'm hoping that it continues to be good uh, throughout the rest of the season. So that does it for us. If you want to leave your ruse, ruse and ru <laughs> reviews, <laughs> reviews for Drop off us. your RuPaul's here. Yes, your reviews. You can do so uh, iTunes or go to robhaswebsite.com slash drag race. Thank you to the whole RHAP team for all their help behind the scenes. And we'll talk to you all soon. Bye.